or who had been a, a fellow traveler or an ideological sympathizer all along. So somebody in the Sharm El Sheikh uh, airport security services or uh, perhaps even in the Egyptian government. I mean, it's not all that uncommon, especially in the Middle East, uh, officials from these regimes essentially flip. They play both sides. They're, they're double agents. I mean, they're members of the Egyptian military who've gone off to join Salafi groups in, in Gaza. Um, so this is, this is a very, very dire turn of events because it shows that now ISIS can do two things. It can sort of conduct these conventional style military operations, take and maintain territory, establish a form of governance and under the so-called caliphate banner, and also revert to classic uh, terrorism operations, bombs aboard planes, you know, blowing up civilians. Uh, if they had their druthers, they would be doing this everywhere, every day. And yes, they would be doing it to us in the United States. So I want to bring in David Susi. He's CNN safety analyst and uh, former FAA safety inspector. David, Egyptian officials we know did not investigate this from the get-go as a, a terrorist incident. With that in mind, what may have been lost in the last week in terms of the time and the resources and, and, and how damaging might that have been to the investigation? Well, what the biggest problem is, is not what the immediate results will be from this, but the fact that down the road, when a criminal...